I like the no scars rule. In our, in our small groups here, and Grady taught me when he does small groups, it's called, they're called listening groups because we just practice listening to one another. But I learned this scars thing uh, a while ago, and it's during the sessions to be respectful. Uh, no side talking, right? No cell phones. I like that one. No advice giving. So when, sometimes when people are in listening groups and someone's sharing, it's just natural. If you, if you want to you help someone out, you start giving advice. But we're not going to do that. We're going to be good listeners. Rescuing is when someone says something and they say, you know what, um, I, I, feel like, I feel like such a, a bad dad. And then someone who wants to rescue them jumps in and says, no, no, no you're not a bad dad. You, you take your kids to the, to the park. You're not a bad dad. And what that does is it stifles someone who's going deep into their emotions. And, and it's really saying stop, stop thinking that way and stop talking like that because it's making me a feel uncomfortable. But when you love someone, you, you say, tell me more. Thanks for telling me. Tell me more. And it, in the business of listening to others, which is, which is my life work and calling, um, when I listen to someone say something intense like suicide, and I've talked to the suicide prevention uh, person of the Navy, and I said, what should be the first thing that comes out of our mouth when someone confesses something like, I feel like killing myself? What should be the first thing out of our mouth? Does anybody, anybody want to take a guess? What, what would be the most helpful thing that you can say, Kai? You need to talk about something. You need to talk about something? That's great. That's a, that's a great. McJudd? Why? Why? Okay. Okay. Thank you. you nailed it. You see my notes? You looking at my notes? Okay. <laughs> that's exactly what we should say. The best thing we can say when people are sharing something is thanks. And I add a little, I add a little bit more to that. Thanks for trusting me with that. Um, you didn't have to tell anybody, but you told me, so you trust me. Thank you. So we always honor people by saying, by saying thank you. And the other things are good too. What, what you boys said, you know, t- tell me more and, and having them explain it. So that's one way we could have non-judgmental listening. Just say so thank you. And then no switching. If someone's sharing throughout the week, we don't. Switching would be, you know, that reminds me of a time when I used to do this. Okay, so these are just, just general general ground rules. Uh, another, another goal I have, this is a Jahari window. So the Jahari window, there's different quadrants here. If, if you know yourself and you're known by others, that means others, others know who you are, and you know yourself, that's a, that's a good area to be in. If, if others know something about you, but you don't know it about yourself, that's called the blind spot. And we all have these, and you don't know your blind spots until someone else shows you. In the military, sometimes we have what's called an A driver. Right? If the person's driving a big truck, and he or she has an A driver, what's the A driver for? What's the A driver for? Anybody a truck driver in here? Blind spots. For the blind spots. Thanks, Jared. And what happens if you don't have an A driver? What could go wrong? You can hit someone, you can hurt someone, you can kill someone. And sadly, I've seen that when, when, when you don't have an A driver. So in life, we need, we need A drivers. We need people who speak truth to us. When I was a teenager, you probably think I'm a teenager now, but I'm not. I have four children. But uh, everybody needs a friend who knows everything about you, and they still love you anyways. That's a true friend. That's a true friend. So we don't want any blind spots. Uh, if, if, you, if you are... If you know yourself and then others don't know you, well, that's, that's a facade. That's a fake. If everybody has a, a certain thing that they, they, they think they see, but you know re- really deep down inside you're something else. That's a facade. We don't want that either. And uh, this one is not known to others and not known to self. That's, that's not good. Isolation is a, is a real thing. It's, it, it, uh, it stifles resilience. There's two types of isolation. Um, emotional isolation is y- nobody's even going to get near me. I don't want anybody to know me. Um, emotional insulation is, Dan, I'm going to let you know me, but not fully know me. I mean, I'm going to let you in, but not, not all the way in. And they're both dangerous. So isolation is not the worst thing we do, but it's how we do the worst things. 
Like the things that you would never want anybody in a million years to know, it starts off by saying, well, I'm not going to tell anybody. And then I'm here, and then you start going downhill. Um, one, of my, one of my jobs is to sit in these things called NJP. Does anybody know what an NJP is? A non-judicial punishment. When a, when, a, when a service member gets in trouble, they have to stand before the commanding officer, six inches front and center here, and explain, and, I, and I, it's, it's part of what we do. It's called advisement to the commands. We, I've sat through tons of these things on people um, getting in trouble. And uh, one of the things that they always say is, is, the, is the commanding officer is asking them, well, how did you, why did you, why did you end up doing that? And it's because they, they became isolated, okay? Um, everybody's, everybody has a deep desire to be, to be heard, to be known, and to be loved. If we're not known, then, then we're not loved. If we're 99% known, if we're 99% known, that means we're, we're unknown. If I'm 99% known and there's 1% of me that I'm holding on to, I actually prevent myself from being loved. Because by holding on to the 1%, I tell myself, well, uh, if I said, you know, Sonia, if you knew this 1% of me, then you wouldn't love me, so therefore you don't get this 1%, so I'm not going to give it to you. And I prevent myself from being loved. One of the things I hope, I hope that everybody in this room, teenager and, and parent and, and adult, um, is be fully known. To live in this arena right here, known to others, known to self. And it takes a while to get there. It takes a while to get there, especially in social media where everybody's highlight reel is up here and everybody's comparing their behind the scenes to the highlight reel and it's very confusing. Because on, on social media, Everybody eats well, everybody's got money, everybody's smiling, everybody's happy, but, I'm, we're, but we know better. It's not, the, it's not the truth, it's not the case, and there are studies, every psychological study, one of my best friends is a, is a Navy psychologist, I said, I said, Joel, is there any study, is there any study that exists in psychology that show that social media is good for your mental health? And he says, Ryan, there's zero. Every single one of them, comparison kills your joy. And ironically, we have a, a little Instagram thing here, right? <laughs> but we can take it back. We don't, we, don't have to, we don't have to fall into that trap. Know that everybody is hurting. Everybody is in need of healing. And that's what this part of uh, this weekend is. So everybody needs to be fully known. Uh, where, where, do you, where do you get that? Where can, you, where can you go besides your best friend, right? And maybe you're not even known by your best friend. Uh, there's several. There's counselors. In the military, military family life counselors, there's uh, psychologists, there's, we have, uh, the Army has family life counselors. They're, they're chaplains that are clinically trained. This is my favorite thing about being um, a chaplain is SECNAF 1730.9 Alpha. Every, every service has their own version of this. This is my favorite thing. SECNAF 1730.9 Alpha says that whatever you tell uh, a chaplain, they, they cannot tell anybody. It's a pop quiz, pop quiz. What do you think that you could tell me that I would by law be mandated to report to, to the law? Go ahead, Kai. Um, if you had, um, if you're like, planning on like, hurting someone or killing them? Sure, homicide, yeah. right, hurting. Um, no, for this, I am not mandated to, so if you, if you told me, hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to kill that other kid. I would probably go to that other kid and say, hey, you don't, you don't want to go to school today, man. <laughs> Just trust me. And go, go call the police. But I couldn't, I couldn't say Kai said this. Okay. Um, any, any other? Go ahead. Pop quiz. What, what do you think? I would, yes. What about um, being physically abused by like, someone? Sure. See, and great question, Emily. I couldn't tell. Unless you asked me to, to tell. Unless he asked me to step in. Um, anybody else? What do you think I would have to? Yes, Kai. One more question. What if you knew who was, the, like, if you knew someone else who was going to do something that's really bad? Like, if you knew. Yeah, right. Okay, if, if I knew. So I had a, I was a chaplain on a ship one time, 
And uh, the, the CEO of the ship, he goes, Chaplain, you mean to tell me if someone was going to kill me, you wouldn't tell me? And I said, no, sir, but if you see me choking someone out, like, Chaps, why are you doing to that guy? Sorry, I can't tell you, sir, but he needs to go down. And I would, I would, I would protect you, sir. But no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell. There's nothing but, but I would, I would always do what's right for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would always, if someone says you're hurt Kai, I'm like, no, you're not. You have to get through me to get to Kai. But the point is, is that there is a place where everybody can go. Uh, the, the, you know, the dependence and where it's complete confidentiality. And the other counselors are good too. The other counselors are good too, but they'll, they'll tell you right up front, uh, homicide, suicide, threats to national security, uh, child abuse, elder abuse, I have to report those things. Mandated report. We don't have that. We don't have that. So you can delve into, like I've never told anybody this before, and then go into it. It's the most, it's the most wonderful healing thing. And teenagers need to do that as well. Because you get into all sorts of stuff, and you, you start to feel weird, and you start to like, oh, anybody, can I tell my parents? I can't tell my parents this. Well, I encourage you to, but sometimes it takes a long time to get there. But if you ever wanted to test this out, Talk to one of the chaplains, okay? All right. Uh, we're also talking about vulnerability this weekend. One of my favorite authors, Brene Brown, says this, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. Showing up and letting ourselves be seen, which is, which is hard. Uh, and the rest of the world is going to tell you to, to hide and, and not let anybody uh, know you. I'm going to go ahead and introduce this little tree thing just, just for a couple minutes, and then I'm going to just cut, cut, cut us loose for, for the rest of the night. Um, I call it the tree illustration, okay? And I'm going to draw this tree here. You're going to see how, how good of an artist I am. Look at this. Boom. There's the tree. Here's the roots. Okay. Here's how I think of, of, of us as, as people. Um, there's, if you look at your, you can open up your, your trifold there. There's, there's different parts here. This is what I consider, um, I, I see everybody as trees, right? So on this tree, you can have this hand over here. Too. There's different realms here, okay? There's the, there's the physical, visible world. And then there is the spiritual, invisible world. When I say uh, s- spiritual world, it's not, it's not like a religious thing. It just means you can't, you can't see it. It's in the spiritual world. Um, I also think of this area right here as this is your heart. So this is your heart. And I would think about this part of the tree as your, your head and what you think with. And then this one, I would say it's your feet and your hands, like, by the time you're, you're doing something or you're acting something, it's up here, but it's attached to your heart. The Greeks had a word for the heart. Uh, it was the Greek word cardia. Does anybody know what a, a cardiologist is? What's a cardiologist? That's a heart doctor, right? But when the Greeks talked about a cardia, they weren't talking about the physical blood pumping organ in your chest cavity. They were talking about the deepest part of the soul. So when they talked about the cardia, they were talking about three things, the mind, your will, and emotions. It's the thinking capacity of your being. We actually don't know where the heart is on the body, so if, not, if it was in my finger, I couldn't cut off my finger and say I lost my heart. It's just, it's just part of us, our mind, will, and emotions. And your heart always tells your head what to do, and then your, your head or your brain tells your body what to do in that order. Let's play a little uh, game here. What do you think, let's put some fruits here on this tree. What are some things that people struggle with? Yes, Tyler. Patience. Okay, so I'll put here one of the fruits is impatient. That's one bad fruit. These are all bad fruits. Emily, yes. Time management. Time management. So what does it look like when it's, when it's a struggle? They always late. How about... Always late. Okay, so we'll, we'll just say always late. Okay, what's another? Yes, Cruz. Uh, procrastinating. procrastinating, okay. Not from personal experience, right? It's 
your, your brother. Procrastination. Okay, Kai. Um, maybe feeling lonely. Okay, feeling lonely. And then when, when they're feeling lonely, what are they doing? What, are, what does it look like? Um, you're not really doing much. You're feeling okay. Like you're, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Let's just say just, just la being lazy. Yeah, lazy. Okay. Let's just fill up the street for a, yes. Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Ooh, these are deep. Okay. Okay, what are some other? Self-centered. Self-centered. What, what does it look like when someone's self-centered? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I like that. Self-centered. Self-centered. What else? What are some other struggles? <laughs> anger. 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 And then, okay. How about uh, th this side of the room? What do you think some people on this side of the room are struggling with? What do you think the person next to you is struggling with? Let's start putting up more fruit here. What's that? Hey, Chad? Being hypocritical? Yes. Like fake? Yes. Yeah, work life balance. So let's just say here workaholic. Okay. Um, what are some of the most destructive behaviors in society? Yeah. Say again? Guilt. Oh yeah, yeah. That's well. That's deep. But it, okay. So when a person is living in guilt, what does it look like? Yeah, he's depressed. Okay, there you go. Now, if you notice, there are two on 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 the tree. It talks about destructive behaviors and productive behaviors. So um, there's some things that society. These see these are things that people see, and they go, "That's that's bad." That's bad. And then there's also some, some other fruits that, that are socially acceptable. So let's just say a person is, let's say they're really good at work, but it's also coming from a bad place. Let's just say they're really, they're always in first place. They always got to be the best. That might not necessarily be coming from a good place. What's some other socially acceptable things that people are doing that might be coming from a bad place? Assertiveness. Say again? Assertiveness. Assertiveness, sure. Okay, so there's all kinds of fruit here. Um, some of the destructive behaviors all throughout the DOD is suicide, drugs, alcohol-related incidents, sexual assault, all those things, those, those are all bad fruits. I'm going to say something that sounds kind of off, but it's, I don't really care how much what you're struggling with as much as the thoughts that you're thinking that lead to the behavior. Does, does that make sense? Like, I don't really care what people are struggling with. I care more about the thoughts that they think from day to day that lead to these things. So, so tomorrow, we're going to unpack this. The, another part of this tree is I, I believe that there are seven core roots that lead to these all kinds of bad fruit. Uh, the root of deception, that's believing a lie. There's a great app there out there called Truth or, Truth or Trash, and it just says something like, I'm a bad person. You get to choose whether that's truth or trash. It's a good game to play. So there's a root of deception. There's a root of rebellion. You know, there's something deep down in our souls that when we, when I see a, like a, you know, thirty only thirty miles an hour, that something in, in me wants to go forty. Okay, that's the root of rebellion. It's in all of us. Something I got from the scriptures is the the, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. If you if someone, if if the love of money is is on their mind, they're going to step on you to get what they want. If someone's hooked on some sort of drug and they want money, they're, they're going to they're gonna get there and hurt other people to get there. These other four, there's other four roots over here. I'm going to unpack them tomorrow, but there's a root of control, people who worship control. It's destructive. It leads to bad things. 
people who worship power, like always having to be right, always having to get in the last word, always having a position of authority. There is the root of approval, meaning they do things just to get other people's approval. And then there is a root of comfort, only doing what's comfortable for someone instead of being vulnerable and transparent and being honest. So those, those are the, the seven roots. What's complicated about this as well in terms of resilience is just life happens. And so sometimes there's a little gash here, here, here. I call these wounds. Like you, if just life happens, I think you have to be alive only about five years or seven years before someone hurts your feelings for the first time. So what does life look like if you get these wounds? If someone says something mean to you, if you're, if, and you, you can get hurt by your, from your siblings as well. You can get hurt from your mom or dad. You can get hurt from grandmas and grandpas. You can get hurt from neighbors. A lot of just living life can cause, you'll, you'll start to accumulate wounds. And what we want to teach you to do over this, over this weekend is how to deal with these wounds. The teenagers are going to do a breakout session when they're, they're going to learn how to deal with wounds that have happened. Same thing with the adults, because we have the same, we have the same wounds. Fear, anger, deceit, shame, and sadness. So life just becomes all about healing from this. It gets even more complex because there are, I believe, these bricks that get built up in our soul that prevent us from being known. Guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy. And we're going to learn how to break up these bricks. How do you kill a root? How do you kill a root, writer? Yes, you pull it out, you throw it out, and the sun shrivels that thing. And once the, the root, when the root dies, guess what else happens? All the fruit fall off. So people go to these anger management classes, which I don't, I think, I don't, I don't really like that. I don't want to manage my anger I want to dig up the root that's causing that and, and watch that sucker be gone. Believe it or not, I used to be a very angry, angry person. People are like, really? You seem so happy. No, I was very angry, very arrogant, coming out of seminary thinking I knew something I was all smart. And all, but anyways, we don't want to manage any of this. I would love to I have a vision of everybody in here walking free from all this stuff that's always bombarding our minds by, by teaching everybody how to dig up these roots. I'll, I'll close it out with this. You dig up a root by, say, by pulling it out of the ground. Things only gain power down here in the darkness. Once they're exposed to the light, they lose all power. And if I could leave you with anything tonight, these are all secrets down here. People who have no secrets, they bring these things out into the light and these things start to die. And then the roots grow again, and these, these things will come back, and we need to pull it out again. And it's just this ongoing cycle of I'm going to confess what's down here, pull it out, tell my friends, tell my spouse, and then watch this stuff disappear. Okay? Uh, we have to, we, I'm going to close there. We, we have to break because uh, we've got to get our kids. This came from a lot of years of, I, this is my journal from 2014 to 16. I started drawing this tree over and over and over again. As I would listen to people pour their souls out, I would write their problems on this tree, and then I was connecting it to, to these roots. And I, and I just found over years and years of doing this, um, it was just a good model. People teaching them how to say what's really going on deep down inside from all ages and watching them experience a type of healing and freedom that, they were, they were never the same and ended up writing uh, a, a book about it in a, in a, in a workshop. Okay, more, more to that tomorrow. I'll, I'll end with this. My, my friend and chaplain, Rob Wilkerson at SOCAF, he gave me this. This guy named Ra, uh, Ram Das, he says he sees everybody as trees. Like you go through a forest, you'll see, okay, that tree's different. Oh, that one's a little slightly bent this way. Oh, that one's taller, that one's shorter, that one's thicker. That, but you don't judge any of the trees. You just notice that they're trees. And if this should change our perspective of people as well. 
when I see someone, I don't care what they're struggling with. I really don't. It could be the worst thing ever, and I just don't care because there's this, just a tree to me. I care more about this, and that's why I don't have any judgment for anybody. Just, just regardless of how they're acting, I want to listen to them because that's when this stuff starts to come up. Okay, um, that's all I have. That's all I have for you tonight. I'm going to cut the parents loose so you can go pick up your kids. At JFK, any, any questions? Okay, yes. Oh, yes. Um, if you want to take a picture, this, I've posted the schedule. We posted the schedule on the back here. Uh, we're going to have breakfast. Breakfast is from 6.30 to 8.45. Child care drop-off. JFK uh, is, a, is a good program, and they, they take you across the street and have trampolines and video games. You went there last year, right? Like, it's fun? It's fun? Okay. No trampolines. Okay. Video games and all the kind of... Anyways, it's fun. If you're 12 and below, it's paid for. And then uh, our first session is going to begin at 9, zero 09. Here, yes. And teenagers are going to be across there with, with Mr. Grady. Okay? All right. Any other admin things, Star Major? Brittany? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you can keep you can keep all your stuff in here.